Almighty and ever-living God, Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we rejoice at this opportunity to come and hear of you, to hear your holy word, to receive the gift that you have granted to us and that you have lavishly poured out upon us with the forgiveness of sins, the joy of being able to come and receive your body given and your blood shed, we pray, Almighty God, that you would send your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that he may rule and direct us according to your holy will to comfort us in our temptations, our afflictions, to defend us from all error and lead us into your truth, being steadfast in the faith and increase in all of our good works and in the end obtain everlasting life, which has been prepared by you from the very beginning. This we ask for and pray for in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God's grace, his mercy, and his peace to you, dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Tonight we continue what was begun last week as Pastor Tony began the process of reminding us of the six chief parts of the catechism. Those are significant to us, as Pastor Tony walked you through last week, specifically the Ten Commandments, as we opened the hymnal, opened the small catechism portion, and began with those Ten Commandments. In this sermon tonight, I'm restricting myself to the issue and the definitions of what is the office of the keys, what is confession, and to understand that rightly, to turn to the Word of God as well as to our confessions. You remember well your own copy of the small catechism? Thankfully, we have that also printed in our hymnal for our use. But in our small catechism, we read that confession has two parts. First, that we confess our sins. And second, that we receive absolution, that is, forgiveness, from the pastor as from God himself, not doubting but firmly believing that by it our sins are forgiven before God in heaven. So the main thing in confession is not the act of confessing sins in all actuality. That really, as much as it might sound shocking, is not very important, especially compared with the absolution. What is our confession compared to the voice of God forgiving our sins? Think of that. The voice of Almighty God forgiving our sins. We would never think that one of our actions or works could ever be close to equal the smallest of God's works and intentions in our lives. God's words, God's works, are always superior to anything that we could do or ever imagine doing. We should not think of confession as if our heartfelt sorrow over sin were the main thing. We should not think about how repentant we are as if our sadness over sins and the depth of that sadness that we might work ourselves to truly believe earns us forgiveness. It does not. No, the gospel is freely given, never earned. We do not earn forgiveness by our act of asking for it, never, nor by our sincere feelings. Forgiveness is given for the sake of Jesus Christ without any merit or worthiness in us. So when we focus on the absolution, we see what a great treasure this is, this great gift of God. It is not the mere voice of a man telling us what we want to hear. And it's not the mere voice of a man that's within our own hearing, but the voice of God himself. After all, we are forgiven in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are not absolved in the name of a man, but in the name of the triune God. It is God who forgives. How could we possibly overestimate the value of the voice of God? How could we think too much of it? His words are infinitely precious. We might very well crawl on our knees for miles to hear the very precious voice of our Redeemer. 
or drive hundreds of miles each and every time we come to divine service, and it would not be too far. But how can we claim that it is God's voice that we hear? In the minds of many, the authority to forgive is thought to be a holdover from the Roman Catholic hierarchical, the hierarchical setting of the priestcraft, as if the Pope himself, on his own authority, declared that priests could forgive sins. But this is not true. The authority to forgive sins is from no less than the lips of Jesus the Christ himself. It is Jesus who declares to us these words. For Christ said, whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18. Jesus said, he who hears you, hears me, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10. And Jesus also declared, if you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven, John chapter 20. So the authority to forgive sins is given to the church by Jesus Christ, not by men. Jesus calls this authority the keys of the kingdom of heaven. So our small catechism calls it the authority or the office of the keys. It is identified as that special authority which Christ has given to his church on earth to forgive the sins of the repentant sinners, but to withhold the forgiveness from the unrepentant as long as they do not repent. But again, many people do not want to believe that the church has the authority to forgive sins. After all, forgiveness is from Christ and his blood and his death. There is only one way to be saved. Surely there cannot be another. It is the cross or nothing. The only forgiveness that can be received comes from the atonement Christ won by his suffering and by his death. But there is often misunderstanding with that, and the misunderstanding is thinking that absolution introduces a different kind of forgiveness. It does not. The forgiveness given in absolution is exactly the same forgiveness that Christ won on the cross. When your sins are forgiven, it is Jesus Christ declaring to you innocent, saying that you are innocent on the basis of his own redeeming work for you. He did his work on the cross to earn forgiveness. The absolution is the delivery system to give you the benefits of the cross. In the same way, holy baptism delivers the same forgiveness. In the same way, the Lord's Supper and the preaching and the gospel, wherever it comes to you. So we should treasure this holy absolution. In just a few words, your sins are washed away. The blood of the Lamb of God is sprinkled upon you, and eternal life is received. Whenever you hear the pastors say the words, I forgive you all your sins, you are getting a better gift than all earthly treasures in this world, anything the world would ever have to offer. So do you have sins? <laughs> of course you do. I do. And I know you do as well. Everyone does. You can come to Jesus Christ and hear him declare forgiveness to you. His word to you, his life, and his life everlasting for you. Focus on your sins. You will see how heavy and ugly and nasty they are. But no one can ever really see exactly how serious sins are because in our human weakness, our eyes do not see sin clearly. But no matter how great a burden, no matter how in depth the sin is, no matter how great, Christ is ready to forgive. He paid the price. He set his gospel on the earth, upon the lips of men, so that you could hear Jesus the Christ speak to you. If you judged with your earthly eyes, holy absolution would seem like nothing. A few words spoken by some man. Why should that give everlasting salvation? 
In the same way, baptism and the supper seem like nothing if we judge it by our external sight. But in faith, in faith, the absolution is the glorious voice of Christ, according to his word. At the transfiguration, God the Father commanded that we should listen to his beloved Son. Absolution is the prime example of hearing the voice of Christ. So I also urge you, come. Come hear the voice of your Savior. He wants to speak forgiveness to you. Listen to him. In his name alone, with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please stand and let us confess our Christian faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed.